This is Geraldine Finn. Uh, if you haven't met her already, she is currently professor of philosophy at Carleton University in Ottawa. Uh, her area of expertise is in 20th century continental <coughs> philosophy and is relevant to contemporary interdisciplinary studies in politics, culture, and the arts. She published widely on a variety of issues intersection of philosophy, feminism, music, musicology, cultural studies, and she's currently working on three major research projects right now, one of which is the truth in music, another is songs of philosophy, uh, both of which seek to write by and for the ear that hears rather than the seeing eye, stroke eye, uh, and include sound recordings. Uh, it's what she calls a musicae philosophy, philosophy musicae. And the third, the third project is a, a book on man, God, religion, which examines the political implications of the naturalization of religion as it's deployed in contemporary debates about the proper place of religion and culture and society. Thank you. Um, before I read the paper that I prepared, um, I just want to give a little explanation of what I was trying to do, and I have no idea what, whether I did it or not, but it, it's definitely an experiment. So as I said in the abstract, in response to the call for papers for this conference, I decided to collect all the references to spec the word speculation and its cognates that crossed my path in whatever I happened to be reading or listening to at the time with a view to making a composition out of them, tuning speculation, to make notes from these found speculations and their various resonances and reverberations and to use them as the compositional material for an experiment in writing, in the sense of writing outlined by Barth in several places, but for example, the grain of the voice and writers, intellectuals, and teachers. What he calls writing as, quote, an adventure of the signifier, an excess of exchange. This is an experiment in writing, or as I was hoping to do, rewriting speculation as, and a few quotes from the Barth again, a space of dispersion of desire where law is dismissed, a space of pleasure, of thrill, a site where language works for nothing, and where significations germinate from within language and its very materiality. This is a writing that works on, at, with, perhaps against language, in order to displace, disorder, dissipate, and dissolve its sedimented meanings and forms. In this case, the language of speculation and in particular, the institutionalized specularity of its types and stereotypes. To make speculation resonate and ring, and hopefully dance and sing, to another tune, tone, on or off the page. This kind of work is necessarily parasitical in all possible senses. It's noisy, disturbs the harmony of the text. It, um, it parasites the text in the sense that it's living off the text that, it, that I've collected. And um, I also parasite text um, mercilessly in the way that I, I write it para-c-i-t-e, because I'm using other people's words all the time without giving them credit, and I abuse them and change them. And in fact, I make use of a lot of, I wouldn't have used this before, but earworms, you know, particular phrases from some of my favorite writers that stick in my ear. I have thought of listing my informants, because I don't give credit as I read this, before um, I read the paper, but I think I'll just read the paper and then you can tell me if you recognize <laughs> anybody. Or occasionally I do say who I'm citing. Um, okay, so that there's actually 14 sections and I'll alert you to them as we get to them, so you just know how long it's going to go on for. <laughs> uh, they're not equally balanced either, and there's, 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 I don't, there's these gaps between. Um, I did find that the first talk this morning laid a wonderful philosophical, theoretical foundation for, I think, what I have done. I'm not sure it was what I thought I was doing. Anyway, so it's called To Speculate on Speculation. The way one says that something functions on such and such an energy source or such and such a fuel. For example, to run on high octane to the point of exhaustion, perhaps. So one, to speculate. From speculare, to spy out, watch, examine, observe, etc., which in turn is from specula, a lookout or a watchtower. This is all from the OED. To observe or view mentally, to consider, examine, or reflect upon with close attention, 
to contemplate, to theorize upon, common in the 17th century, now rare or obsolete, to talk a matter over conjecturally, to look or gaze at something, to examine, inspect, or observe closely or narrowly, as in every morning he speculated his urine, <laughs> to engage in the buying and selling of commodities or effects in order to profit by a rise and fall in their market value, to undertake to take part or invest in a business enterprise or transaction of a risky nature in the expectation of considerable gain. Two, speculation. In English, as in later Latin and the Romance languages, the literal senses have been less usual than the transferred and the earliest examples occur in the latter group, according to the OED. So speculation, the faculty or power of seeing, sight, vision, especially intelligent or comprehending vision, now archaic. The exercise of the faculty of sight, the action or an act of seeing, viewing, or looking on or at, examination or observation, as in, her goodly chamber was set all about with depured mirrors of speculation. The contemplation, consideration, or profound study of some subject, frequent in the 17th century, now rare or obsolete. The act of speculating, or the result of this, a conclusion, opinion, a view, or a series of these reached by abstract or hypothetical reasoning. A conjectural consideration or meditation, an attempt to ascertain or anticipate something by probable reasoning. Conjecture, formation of opinion on incomplete grounds guessing, especially in textual criticism, of a reading not in the text, a guess or a proposed reading. The action or practice of buying and selling goods, land, stocks and shares, etc., in order to profit by the rise or fall in the market value, as distinct from regular trading or investment. Engagement in any business enterprise or transaction of a venturesome or risky nature, but offering the chance of great or unusual gain. Three, speculator. One who speculates on abstruse or uncertain matters. One who devotes himself, sick, <laughs> to, <laughs> to speculation or theoretical reasoning, as some philosophical speculators have started doubts whether the meter is really the 40 millionth part of the circumference of the earth. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> A watchman, sentry, or lookout as it is reported by a certain Greek writer that if their speculator do not give them the watchword, they tear him to pieces with their teeth. One who engages in occult observations or studies, an observer, a spectator, a messenger sent to consult an oracle, as in they sent speculators to Delphos. Finally, one who engages in commercial or financial speculation, as he was a keen speculator, well versed in the mystery of bulls and bears. There are a class of speculators in the fag ends of leases. I couldn't resist what came after speculator, which is speculatrix. <laughs> a female speculator in various senses, as in Persons, even of ordinary rank in life, pretended to be what they term speculators. And sometimes women were speculatrices, 1841. Another one from 1908. This indicates that the exploitress and speculatrix has just obtained an advantage by doing something particularly mean. <laughs> Good on her. <laughs> Number four, according to Milton Keynes, Speculators may do no harm as bubbles on a steady stream of enterprise, but the situation is serious when enterprise becomes a bubble in a whirlpool of speculation, as we know. And from Zombie Economics by John Quiggan, How Dead Ideas Still Walk Among Us, the efficient markets hypothesis implies that there can be no such thing as a bubble in the price of assets such as stocks or houses. The argument begins with the claim that if a bubble in the stock prices were indeed observable, speculators would sell the asset in question. If that did not end the bubble, short sellers would enter the market selling assets they did not hold in the expectation of being able to buy them later at a lower price. This would ensure that the price returned rapidly 
to the true market value. At the same time, it would make the speculators and short sellers rich, as indeed it did. This India imploded in appropriately spectacular fashion in 1998, and again in even more spectacular fashion in 2008. In 2008, not even a trillion dollar bailout was enough to save all the big financial institutions from the consequences of their reckless speculation. Five. What's your game? Speculation, I believe, from Jane Austen, The Watsons. The Watsons is the surviving fragment of an unfinished novel by Jane Austen, who refers here to a card game called Speculation, which was popular in the 19th century. The Italian word speculare, as we've already heard, appears early in the 15th century, but not in reference to economic interactions. It means generally to spy out, to examine, or to observe. Only at the end of the 18th century is the term speculation used as an economic concept. At this point, it is drawn into a lexical field influenced by neighboring concepts such as adventure, gambling, and vice. Um, Yes, on the one hand, speculation demanded special competence and thus excluded those who were unfit or not educated to speculate. On the other hand, since on a formal level, speculation required nothing more than access to money, potentially anyone could be in, uh, included, regardless of his or her professional skills. The ambivalences of speculation resurfaces or surfaces in Jane Austen's Mansfield Park the choice of game already makes the term undecidable. Mrs. Grant cannot decide between a game of skill, whist, and the, quote, democratic game of chance, speculation. She's reassured that speculation is more enjoyable and that there is no simpler game. Six. Speculation. A round game of cards, the chief feature of which is the buying and selling of trump cards, the player who possesses the highest trump in the round winning the pool. Trump is the playing card of a suit temporarily ranking above others, colloquially a person of great excellence. The trump card is the card turned up to determine which suit shall be trumps, any card of this suit. It can also mean a valuable resource. To trump means to take the card or take a trick with a trump. To trump up is to fabricate or invent a story, an excuse, an accusation. Apparently, it's a corruption from triumph. Trumpery is a noun meaning worthless finery, rubbish, nonsense. It can also function as an adjective, meaning showy but worthless, delusive, shallow, trumpery jewels, trumpery arguments. From the Middle English and the Old French, tromperie, <coughs> meaning from tromper to deceive. Seven. What's your game? Speculation, I believe, from the introduction to the speculative turn, continental materialism and realism. Speculation, says the introduction, aims at something beyond the critical and linguistic turns. As such, it recuperates the pre-critical sense of speculation as a philosophy concerned with the absolute, while also taking into account the undeniable progress that is due to the labor of critique. The works collected here are a, spec a speculative wager on the possible returns from a renewed attention to reality itself. Now, I've asked this question to a couple of people already um, at this conference. Uh, in this book on speculative turn, there are 25 chapters and 28 contributors, because some are co-written. Um, I ask you, uh, how many of those 28 contributors do you think were women? are women. Zero. And if you know of any of them, please write the names down <coughs> and I will tell you. Do you know how many women? There's actually one. And this is how she's introduced in the introduction. The guy's writing it tells you what's coming up in all the chapters. And then he says, somewhat ironically, Latour's longtime intellectual friend, <laughs> Isabel Stangers, follows a rather different path, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> to return to section seven, what's your game? Speculation, I believe. From Phyllis Grosskirth's biography of Havelock Ellis. 
He ventured the speculation that female inversion was probably far more common than in, in males, but was not regarded as a social evil, because men tended to view it with amused condescension. At, <laughs> at some point, Edith raised the question of having a child. Ellis made no reply, and the matter was dropped. One can only speculate as to how earnestly she wanted a child. From the Wolfman, by the Wolfman. He left my office in a rage at Freud, which led to a dream in which his father is obviously castrated. The patient's father, in the dream of professor, resembling, however, a begging musician, known to the patient, sits at a table and warns the others present not to talk about financial matters before the patient because of his tendency to speculate. His father's nose is long and hooked, causing the patient to wonder at its change. Excuse me. Jewish mystics of the Middle Ages devoted treatises to the measurement of the glory of God, computed with mystic measurement units. These strange speculations no doubt express profound and intimate experiences, which these mystics were unable to convey in clearer form. Ruth speculated further, drawing from the conservative biology that had influenced her when she married Stanley, quotes, it might be that if she's she is only at ease in sex if children were the ultimate implication. It was, it was the 20th century philosophy Bergson who characterized philosophic speculation as, quotes, making use of the void to think the full. The reception of Bataille's work produced shockwaves whose frequency is set to those with which we associate the censure placed upon Schlegel, who prior to Nietzsche, put a body on the line of philosophical speculation. Strike followed the speculative train of his own thoughts over the rough terrain of news sites and blogs. Here and there, he stumbled upon pockets of feverish speculation, of theories of Landry's death that mentioned clues the police had failed to follow up. The correspondence sent by the 24-hour news channels kept up a steady stream of comments and speculation around the few sensational facts they know. What follows, says Freud in Beyond the Pleasure Principle, is speculation, often far-fetched speculation, which the reader will consider or dismiss according to his sick, individual predilection. <laughs> it is further an attempt to follow out an idea consistently out of curiosity to see where it will lead. The text on whose borders this discourse, my discourse, would be attempting to maintain itself. Obviously, there's more to speculation than meets the eye, or perhaps not. Eight, but I must say to the muse of fiction, as the Earl of Pembroke said to the rejected nun of Wilton, go spin, you jade, go spin, until the ear tunes into another music, the voice starts to sing again, the very gaze stops squinting. To spin is to draw out and twist threads to make yarn thus to make by extrusion a fine viscous thread, to produce, compose a narrative, literary article, etc. To spin a yarn, originally nautical, is to tell a story. To spin out is to spend, consume time or one's life, to prolong in discussion, a cause, to whirl around. In Anglo-Saxon times, spinning <coughs> was a routine winter occupation of the female members of the household. Alfred the Great, in his will, calls the female part of his family the spindle side. It was formerly reckoned that no young woman was fit to be a wife until she had spun herself a set of body, table, and bed linen. Hence the maiden was termed a spinner, or spinster, stir being a feminine agent suffix which survives in fossilized form in names Baxter and Webster and, of course, sister. It is said that the heraldic lozenge in which the armorial bearings of a woman are depicted originally represented a spindle. Among the Romans, the bride carried a distaff, which is the staff from which the flax was drawn in spinning, hence figuratively women's work, <coughs> and a woman herself, in allusion to what was women's common daily tasks. Homer writes that Chryseus was to spin and share the king's bed. But I digress, as indeed I must if I am to pursue this experiment in tuning speculation, in turning, toning, overturning, returning, perhaps dethroning, the, met the monotone droning of its specular articulations, in turn, turn, and turn again. Until the ear tunes into another music, the voice starts to sing again, 
the very gaze stops squinting. It is indeed a question of breaking with a certain mode of specularization, of despecularization. Nine, Alcibiades is wealth. This is from a collection of poetry that I found in working on this project by Jeff Dolvin called Speculative Music. If Socrates is a man and all men are mortal, then Socrates is mortal. If Socrates is thirsty after a long day talking, then Socrates is a man, right? And deserves a drink. And if the night wears on and the talk turns to love and the wine sings from the cup, then Socrates is mortal, surely. And if, and, if, and if the musicians are playing softly for themselves and the wine sleeps on the floor, asking a woman to dance, asking a man to dance, one, two, three, may I have the next dance? Socrates is a man and all men are mortal. As a proof of the impossibility of artificial intelligence, the inability to enjoy strawberries and cream may have struck the reader as frivolous. Possibly a, a machine might be made to enjoy this delicious dish, but any attempt to make one do so would be idiotic. From Alan Turing, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, also cited in Speculative Music. 10. Lacan reminds his students over and over again to stop trying to understand everything because understanding is a form of defense, of bringing everything back to what is already known. The more you try to understand, the less you hear, the less you can hear something new and different. One must be especially unyielding about obedience to that rule with patients who practice the art of shearing off into intellectual discussion during their treatment, who speculate a great deal and often wisely about their condition and in that way avoid doing anything to overcome it. Rising to a perspective that would dominate the totality, to the vantage point of greatest power, he thus cuts himself off from the bedrock, from his empirical relationship with the matrix he claims to survey, to specularize, to speculate, specularization. It is indeed a question of breaking a certain mode of specularization. The eye gives us the structure of the world, the skeleton of things. Every morning he speculated his urine. With the, with the ear, we listen to its heartbeat, its pulse. Man's eye, understood as a substitute for the penis. The eye is the agent for identification and stabilization. Her goodly chambre was set all about with depured mirrors of speculation. The ear, an organ for perceiving the actuality of happenings. In hearing, we are directed to something going on. The ear hears the cracklings of the phono pickup, making them into a new music, tuning in to a different wavelength, hearing something new and different. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Why should you want to know? I'm not going to sing the rest of it. Don't you mind about the future? Don't you try to think ahead? Save tomorrow for tomorrow. Think about today instead. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Buzz number 12. A sibilant hum, such as is made by bees, flies, and other winged insects, as the honeybees swarm by with buzz and boom. That buzz in the ears, which is noticed in breathing nitrous oxide. The confused or mingled sound made by a number of people talking or busily occupied, busy talk. Hence, condition of a busy activity, stir or ferment. All the buzz in Athens was now about virtue. A groundless fancy, a whim, a fad, a busy rumor. A buzz saw, a circular saw. A buzz word, a catchword, a slogan, speculation. To buzz a verb. To make the humming sibilant sound characteristic of bees and other insects, to fly out in with such a sound, to flutter or hover about like a buzzing insect, to move about busily as the priest was always buzzing about him, or those voluntary informers that are buzzing about the ears of great men, to speak indistinctly, to mutter, murmur busily, to make the indistinct murmuring sound or hum produced by a large number of people talking, to talk busily, also said of the place in which such talking is going on, 
the court buzzed like gnats in the sunshine. Said of the sound of words, of the sound or words so uttered, a whisper buzzed about the castle that an ugly deed was likely to be done. To tell in a low murmur or whisper, to communicate privately and busily, to spread as a rumor with whispering or busy talk. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Why should you want to know? 13. From Heidegger, Age of the World Picture, 1938. The decisive, decisive unfolding of the character of modern science as constant activity produces a human being of another stamp. The scholar disappears and is replaced by the researcher, engaged in research programs. These are not the cultivation of scholarship are what places this work at the cutting edge. The researcher no longer needs a library at home. He, sick, is, more, is constantly on the move. He negotiates at conferences and collects information at congresses. He commits himself to publishers' commissions. It is publishers who now determine which books need to be written, 1938. <laughs> From an inner compulsion, the researcher presses forward into the sphere occupied by the figure of, in the essential sense, the technologist. Only in this way can he remain capable of being effective. And only then, in the eyes of the age, is he real. Yet because the essence of research is constant activity, the industrious activity of mere busyness creates the appearance of a higher reality behind which the excavations of research work are accomplished. In this philosophy, reality becomes a function of judgment. According to this interpretation, Reality is posited as some kind of proposition. There is no direct experience of reality. We can imagine it not as the kind of thought that tries to come to terms with the real, to maintain the difficulties posed by apparent logical and or physical contradictions. The real is what does not depend on my idea of it, says Lacan but is rather a kind of encyclopedic endeavor to exhaust a field. Working in the service of the master signifier, more or less any kind of argument will do, as long as it takes on the guise of reason and rationality. In the end, we reach a situation where the difference between constant activity and busyness is not only unrecognizable, but has become unreal. What happens to the jouissance? the hearing of sense, the enjoyment of sense that is sacrificed, where does it go? Is it simply annihilated? Does it simply vanish? Or does it shift to a different level or locus? The answer seems clear. It shifts to the other. And it is, in a sense, transferred to the other's account. But where, asks Heidegger, within constant activity is research to discover a counterbalance to mere business? Where, indeed? 14. I have an idea. Strip out the frets, no rungs or steps, no lets, no ratchets. <coughs> Unplug the valves, grease up the slide, don't punctuate, elide, elide. <coughs> From an invention, a libretto for speculative music by Jeff Dolvin. Wasn't it Yeats who said, start with anything, as soon as you have a context, anything? The decisions about where to go derive from the context of where you are at any moment. There is a progressive movement from the language to the poem, from the poem to the song, and from the song to its performance, sound that follows not by logic, but by affinity. The ear hears the cracklings of the phono pickup, making them into a new mu music. At this very moment, in this context, here I am, tuning, toning, turning, returning, disowning, dethroning, attempting to despecularize speculation through poetry, play, and song. Trying to let language speak, words, phonemes, consonants, vowels, without pushing it along to a preconceived destination. It's the praxis of jouissance, of hearing sense, of enjoying the play of, the sound of, sense, coming. What Bart, Bart refers to as the efflorescence or the voluptuousness of the sound signifiers and the rustle of language, he says, which forms a utopia. Which utopia? That of a music of meaning. 
a vast auditory fabric deployed in all its sumptuosity without a sign ever becoming detached from it. This is utopia, he says, no doubt about it, stamped with delectation. I have an idea, string a string, steel or gut, through everything. String a string, now to then. Or am I repeating myself again? This is the poet Dalvin again. Or perhaps I should sing. The essential thing is to set the song in motion as a graft, and not as a meaning or a spectacle. The stereographic activity of an entirely other ear, an entirely other echo, echo, echo sphere. Ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>